what we do when preparing components is first of all we prepare um, and place all of the components on a template. Uh, this is basically a big representation of the PCB itself and you can export this kind of uh, printouts from the PCB software you are using. As you can see here, uh, since we are going to be soldering this side here, you can see that the parts which are on the sheet itself are located here. So for instance, uh, components such as R155, which is a resistor, can be found here, and uh, the uh, transceivers can be found here, here. So basically what we do is we have a small stock of components. Uh, every workstation has one, and uh, all of the components that are needed for any device can be found there. So we set up all of the components from the stock, we place them onto the sheet, so that even we just place this sheet near the PCB itself and start just pick and placing the components or only the PCB. And normally we would do this by a pick and place machine when we are doing high quantities, but 50% uh, of the time we assemble the devices by hand because most of the orders we take, they are uh, custom. For instance, a person may say, I don't want this component, I want another component, so we just don't place it. So basically, half of the time, we assemble everything by hand. Just, uh, just to give you an idea of how our components on each work desk are organized, we have these bins here, which are named and marked. And uh, we have a stock program, which we use. And for instance, you can see here, we have the B18. And in the program, it says it has a, a flex ribbon on it. And this is how we assemble our sheets. So, in the end result, we have uh, this sheet here, and we open up the notebook, and we start uh, putting components from the stock onto the sheet. Normally, this is done by uh, pick and place machine again, and those machines have the components already put inside, but as I said before, this is done for larger quantities, and uh, you need time to set up the machine itself, put the components inside and basically it's a one day work so you set up a machine and you leave it to assemble a lot of PCBs and you do them by bulk so we have like four PCBs in one row and you, the machine is going to assemble all of them just a quick tip before we continue any further I would like to explain how we position everything when assembling a PCB uh, for instance when you start designing the actual PCB itself uh, after you done the schematics try to place the components by areas. For example, this area here represents the power of the device and it powers up the gum stick and everything else. This is the 3.3 voltage regulator and uh, inductor switches and other components. This is the area for the LCD and this is the touch screen parts. Some switches here for uh, changing modes and uh, changing pins so that you can use it for something else. As you can see, these are the transceivers for the, from which convert basically 1.8 volts to 3.3, which is usable by the LCD, because Gumstick operates on 1.8 volts. And here you can see the RF module parts, and uh, after that we go to the antenna, the balloons and other filters. So as a general rule, you may want to design the PCB in areas so that you know that this area here is for the LCD, this area here is for the power and this saves you time when assembling it because you actually know that some components because when you are assembling a device you most of the time know which components go there and uh, it saves you time when assembling it especially when you are assembling many of them and not just one to explain a bit better what I mean here is um, for example this is the schematic representation of the power the power for the flow uh, we do these schematics in KiCad. I'm not going to start to explain why we use KiCad. It's just a program we like and it has features which we find very useful. Uh, what I'm trying to explain here is, for instance, um, as you can see here, this is the power sheet uh, for the device. And um, also, as a general rule, when you are doing schematics and uh, there is a, a design part which is called the main schema of the design, and this is basically the building blocks of the device. Uh, we try to design each sheet so that it has a numbering. For instance, the power has the number 150. It has 150 slash the power. 
so that when you are assembling the device, you, ha you know that the capacitor C150 is on the 150 sheet and can be found on the power. Also, capacitor uh, 141 is for the audio and can be found on 140 sheet. And this is basically done a bit different when you're assembling a more complicated device. You start numbering by 1000. Let's say you have power, so it's not going to be one, 150, it's going to be 1050. And you go up and you go up and you go up because you may have uh, more than 100 components on each sheet. For instance, here, as you can see, we have a resistor 155. 155 resistor can be found, let me see, here we go, 155. And this is the area for the uh, USB host. Just a quick note.